Um, well, maybe we should start at the beginning. And your first exhibition was with Daniel in 1993. So maybe you could say how you first met. Did you meet Wolfgang or his work first? Um, to me? Yeah, you could say. <clears throat> Actually, um, I had a friend who was looking at the ID magazine that time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Should I talk louder? Yeah. Um, and he, he showed me this ID magazine and said, like, oh, that's a cool thing to do. And um, there was an ID party. And then uh, uh, we met and I said, like, you know, I saw that photograph in, your, in that magazine. And, um, and he said, like, yeah, I'm here in town. And Sorry. Can we have some help? Can you hear me? I can also speak a little loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was... Uh, a great coincidence that uh, um, it, there was an ID party in Cologne the day before the opening of uh, the Unfair, you which was that, this right? okay. alternative art fair um, yeah. to Art Cologne. And uh, Maureen Paley um, took a piece of my work, took the picture of Lutz and Alex sitting in the trees. She took that to Unfair, uh -huh. and I volunteered to, to print it in Hamburg and, and bring it to Cologne. Uh, but the night before was uh, was this ID party, and um, and Daniel's friend Michael came up to me and said, you know, we saw these pictures, and do you want to meet? Uh, you should meet Daniel. And so yeah. I met Daniel the night before, and uh, so we struck up our relationship the day before I officially first showed in a uh, in yeah, a. There was a relationship. Yeah. You came with a suitcase, yeah. <laughs> and then you showed me all that photographs. Yeah. <laughs> I said, hmm. <laughs> and then in the back was like, oh, this is interesting, yeah. Um, that was also nice. But that yeah. was November, and in January we already had the show. Yeah. So what was it about that? The contents and that time of that suitcase. It was like these things, you know. Like what was what was was it about the contents of the suitcase? That made you the want suitcase to is actually important because um, he's so much about suitcase, no? I mean, in these days, but uh, we didn't know that in that time. The whole thing started so easy and so like um, without thinking what we are doing now, yeah, and uh, um, and that was maybe a nice start because. Um, To do things like with artists, um, in retrospect, this always like looks like so like planned or like a, it was really like a, a cool thing. We just met and we did and we understood that he is a has a certain talent or something, you know, like, and that was amazing. Yeah. And then we went from there. Yeah, it was not a planned thing, but. But what we are going with, doing here now today. Yeah. Do you think times have changed now that that kind of encounter doesn't happen so much? Do it people was still have the suitcases? Um, no, I guess, I guess um, people meet um, always in in uh, unexpected ways, or um, I guess um, no. But the I mean, Cologne in, the, in those days was still the center of the. West German uh, <coughs> art world. Uh, actually, by that time, of course, Germany was reunited, yeah. um, and um, really everything happened there in this uh, um, really small city. And um, and um, I mean, it was hugely exciting for me because I had moved to uh, Britain in '90, and um, and somehow through Cologne, I reconnected. Um, or through Daniel I reconnected to Cologne, which is the region where I was from, yeah. you know? but after school I moved to Hamburg and I hadn't really had a personal connection to Cologne. And then from 93 I regularly came um, and it was of course a fantastic time with um, people in the gallery like Kai Althoff, uh, Isa, Isa Gensken, she came by the first day of installation and was the, the first, first show actually. Um, when Wut and Trauer wandelt, what was that photograph? What is the real name? Uh, wandelt Wut und Trauer in Widerstand. Sigmar Polke came and looked like 
20 minutes on that photograph. Yeah? Mm. That was also Cologne. Yeah? We had a tiny room, like really nothing. We had no money, nothing, you know. But then these people come also. Yeah? That was Cologne in this time. Yeah. Yeah? People in Berlin, the youngsters forget about it, that the Cologne was, uh, there was a certain time. Yeah? More than other uh, European cities. But um, it was a good start. And um, there was a carnival also, maybe, or something. I mean, I've, I never did so much carnival. But that started also with us, you remember? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say this, but... Uh, no, two, two, yeah. weeks, two weeks later, after the opening, I came back to <laughs> celebrate carnival, which yeah. I had never... <laughs> um, never done, and um, ah, anyway. I mean, neither also before. I mean, I have a reputation, but <laughs> it was kind of important because um, things started, and we was talking in the bar about things in life, you know. Yeah. I guess what was particular in that you cannot, I mean, you really cannot plan, I could not have planned that, but the, the, the um, that time, um, there was literally no art market, yeah. and um, and there was a whole new generation of artists uh, thinking about what can what could art look like now. You know? What can we do? And um, I mean, in terms of market, like the f um, I wanted to keep my photographs really accessible, and so they were uh, 200 euros for yeah. the smaller size, and uh, and uh, I think we sold three in the first show. Um, and, um, and it was not about selling. It was no? not. Yeah, it was totally. I mean, there, nobody expected things to sell. We yeah. just didn't expect any sales. And um, but does that change um, the kind of work you make when you do expect things to sell and when they're not two hundred euros? No, it, I, I, sorry, but, but you, you also want that people like your work. I mean, not to be slimy, but it, it was totally interesting that, and that maybe have in common with Isa um, that. You wanted to have the viewers involved, no? Mm. And that is interesting. Yeah. It was not about the money. And was there a big change from showing work in magazines and you do publications too, compared to an exhibition? Is that different or is that the same? I mean, it was, it was a simultaneous activity. I technically first did exhibitions uh, and, um, and a year later started to work for um, uh, published in, in um, ID, and uh, um, it has always been a conscious, conscious decision uh, to go where there's the most energy. You know, I yeah. felt there was a lot of energy in, I mean, in clubs, in music, in, in, and ID has always been this place um, that I um, felt inspired by. I felt inspired by, by the physical um, possibilities of spaces and yeah. by the physical possibilities of, of magazines. And, uh, and it's been a simultaneous thing. In hindsight, and even at the time, people always think that there's only one trajectory possible from magazine to art. Yeah. But it's so stupid. I mean, people have always done that in the past. You know, things happen at the same time. And, um, and, um, and they are um, both valid means and, and in, in, in our show, um, you know, like I showed the magazine page which I had designed um, myself um, as a multiple, as an um, unlimited print next to a small print I made with my, myself. Yeah. Um, and, and to me they were both equal, equally valid art objects. And, and that uh, questioning of, of worth and value, that was, I think, very um, typical of the time, no? that people no, were... Not, no, it was to, for you to be there. It was not it was the time, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the status of the art object, you know, after the 80s, which was very much um, about objects, yeah. people were questioning yeah. what... Oh, oh especially okay. photography, of course, yeah. Because photographer came up and Everybody was trying to frame it also. How were you trying? To, were you trying to frame it too? Sorry. As a gallerist, were you trying to frame it too? 
photography. Me? No. Yeah. Um, no, I was not interested in framing at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Even not today. It, it, it became a different uh, thing, you know, like um, contents-wise. You know, like, but yeah. uh, Wolfgang, you've said before that um, your approach to photography as a medium has always been that you wanted to approximate what it feels for people to see through your eyes. Did you find that Daniel did that instantly? That he felt that he I, could see through your eyes. Um, <laughs> good question. <laughs> I mean, I certainly felt understood. I think that's for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope. No. no he, <laughs> uh, I guess that that was the basis of of uh, of um, uh, our. Friendship, no? and that's what um, I mean. I feel really fortunate no? that um, that um, um, I have dealers that that are for, for our relationship first and foremost is based on an understanding of um, of the work that we can actually talk yeah. about the content and um, and um, like the the whole strategic or whatever conversation is secondary it's it is like um, talking about um, about work and I think that's still today the same as it was 20 years ago I hope no <laughs> you're still talking we're still talking yes and you extend that relationship to the one you would like to have with viewers as well um, I mean, there's only a limited amount of um, of actual conversations you can have. Yeah. Uh, and um, um, but you see the work as a kind of mini social platform. Um, I mean, it. it um, I mean, the good thing is with with uh, you know when I get approached. Um, by people in like in a bar or something, um, and then a friend asks me, "Does that happen a lot, or is it yeah. annoying?" And I, I say, um, "You know, it's usually nice people. I mean, they would only know this or only feel uh, um, that they wanted to talk to me because they feel drawn to the work, um, and they are not there for um, you know. It's not about celebrity or anything." Um, and, Annoying, yeah. because it's um, um, because it's it's a different level of being known, you know. Yeah. Like I'm I'm only known um, within a small circle, and and when people um, feel a connection, uh, then I feel that it's not annoying, you know. I think, yeah. I think it's great, and that's actually really what I try to do to to touch touch people, maybe, I mean, not in, in the same way or predictable way, I can't plan how that happens, but um, I, I think if when somebody connects to 10% of the pictures in a show, you know, and gets some sort of trigger, oh, I know what that feels like, or I have a sense what that might have smelled like, you know, that's all I can hope for. Yeah. But you get a pleasure from that. Um, yes. No. Yeah. I don't. Uh, yes. I yes. not. Yes. <laughs> no. I, yes. When you won the Turner Prize, did that um, that give you more friends? Did more people come up to you in bars? Did Daniel raise the prices? No. Me raising the prices? Do I look like I raise the prices? No. Uh, yeah, of course, there was a conversation about money uh, uh, at a certain point also, but um, that was also much too later, you know, that was not, that was not ever um, the main yeah. discussion. Yeah. But does winning a prize like that change things for you? It's funny, like, the, um, <clears throat> at the time, like in the late 90s, uh, when, when all this furore around the Turner Prize was going on, um, Everybody in my, amongst my friends, we were all highly cynical of the whole thing. No? It was uncritical, and we were not taking it that seriously. And when I was uh, nominated, I um, I knew I looked at it from the inside, and and um, I mean I was of course 
um, shaken and I thought, oh my God. No? And, but I also knew that artistically it is a bizarre setup to put four artists against each other. No? It's kind of not, not right yeah. in a way. No? We knew that this is done for a public spectacle no? to draw attention to art. And it's a super successful prize because it is set up in this wrong way. Whereas a prize that is given to an artist and there's no competition, people write a small article about it. And uh, this idea of competition is what, what but I was brought so the proud when you got it. <laughs> but I was really proud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I remember it was walking down the stairs, and then people was really like, this postcards. I mean, it was really like, wow, yeah? That was an amazing moment also. I mean, the English only can maybe do this, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and the Turner Prize was the important thing. Come on, you know. No, it was two thousand. We didn't expect it that you, you would get that thing, but uh, it was amazing. I remember. Yeah. And then for three days, I was a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> really. Like Since the, <laughs> the next morning, I, I walked out of the house. Oh come on, the sun, uh, gay. Porn photographer catch the turner. Yeah, the, no, the, the, the terrible like, thing is it was the Daily Telegraph. Oh my <laughs> God, oh, even that. It wasn't the Sun. <laughs> it was really the Telegraph, which yeah. is the equivalent to the NZZ or yeah. the FZ, um, wrote gay porn, gay pornographer. Um, German uh, gay porn. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't no. forget the German. No, no, no. no, no that's, that, <laughs> that was that's the English totally, porn. <laughs> um, that's really interesting. Like when Nick Sorota called me, um, I said, um, oh, I'm really I'm English. Con <laughs> concerned, like, oh, I don't want that there's some German, gay, German, German, German. Yeah. Um, and none of that happened. It was only a couple of papers. I think the Mail and the Telegraph uh, picked up on me being gay. Um, yeah. The English are very good at incorporating foreign <laughs> influences that they like. No, it's yeah. really good. I've, I've uh, always been treated as a um, London-based, German-born artist, yeah. and uh, um, and um, um, no, but it was funny. Like the, for three days, I had street recognition. <clears throat> People really recognized yeah. me on the street, and after three days, it died down, which uh, <gasps> which uh, really told me that basically, in order to be properly famous, you have to be in the news every three days. <laughs> And well, that's I was very happy that it was just a one <laughs> one-off experience, yeah. and then ever since you didn't was... enjoy it. Not no, little, no, then. I would have would hate it if yeah. it uh, happened all the time. No, but uh, anyway, and so I always felt it's not going to change anything. And the Deichtorhallen uh, Castello di Rivoli, Louisiana tour was already planned um, to start in 2001. Yeah. So things on you know were on a. a Somehow it didn't initiate something, but uh, what did change was that those who were on the fence, who had no particular opinion about me, they felt, oh, he must be kind of all right, because you know, an actor who wins an Oscar, it probably is not the worst actor. Yeah. Those who didn't like my work, they didn't like it after the Turner either. But um, and those who liked it also didn't change much, but somehow in the middle ground. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different, it started so differently and the Turner maybe changed for some people something to look at your work more, but you didn't change really, mm. you, not before, not after, you know, like that was not your, and then I, I always like that, you know, like you're, um, you get a lot of attention and of course you say like three days, uh -huh. And then you go and continue to work, you know, like, and um, and that's why you why we're sitting here, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. We talked earlier about um, the magazine being kind of the important space at the time in the early '90s to show work or an interesting space. Um, today, obviously, the culture is more digital, and we talked a bit earlier about Instagram and the other Wolfgang Tillmans. He hasn't posted anything, but how does, um, the, I guess, the increased velocity, apparently it's not Wolfgang who has this instrument, hell, um, but the increased velocity of image making and distribution, how does that affect your work? And we see people walking around the fair with mobile phones. Um, mm. um, 
it, it's funny because I had this feeling of accelerated image production at the end of the 90s. I don't know if you remember, everybody had little small compact cameras yeah. and, and people were snapping away. And then I realized, like, what, what is this? This is uh, um, it's all about being seen taking a picture. It's not about the picture, it's about the act of being seen to be photographing. So it's like a strange loop about who is in control of this situation. And the moment you are pointing, you are somehow signaling to the people around you that you are somehow understanding this. No? Yeah. And, um, and, um, and there was a, um, an acceleration then that I felt um, and, and, um, and a whole shift of um, the presence of pictures of young people in the media, how it shifted into being marketable imagery. Yeah which I um, was, um, you know, never could um, um, you know, say anything against, but I was never part of, you know, I never, yeah. I never did advertising or, um, or that, but... Um, but it plays an important role in some of your work as well, that image culture. Yes, and, and it still does, but, but so by, by, uh, by 99, 2000, I, um, um, I actually... Uh, greatly reduced my output of camera-made pictures, and um, and um, for the next ten years, very much worked with um, uh, photographs that um, were not made with a camera, yeah. and um, and they were um, these are the abstract the abstract pictures, yeah. which um, are actually very concrete because they are the things that they are. You know, they're not abstract; they are actually something in front of you, uh, but they don't perform as photographs. So when you look at them, they perform differently. And I wanted to slow down that image consumption that I already felt accelerating then. Um, and then actually the image production and consumption really accelerated. Yeah. And by the time of the end of the decade, I felt, well, now it's so crazy. Now I want to get involved again. And that's yeah. where the whole Neue Welt work started. Um, which then culminated in the show in Zurich two years ago. Yeah. Maybe you could explain a bit more about Neue Welt and this idea that maybe, I mean, on the first hand, it sounds like a sort of really grand scheme um, to capture the world. Um, how did that start? Was that a sort of long burning thing or? Actually, I wouldn't mind now in hindsight, ask Daniel how, when, <laughs> What? <laughs> they want to listen to you, no. not me. No, because we we showed work in 2010 from that um, emerging uh, uh, body of work, or in um, the show. Um, because when did it become tangible as that? <coughs> um, what? Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> Um, I guess it really started for me in 2007 already. I thought I want to unlearn certain ways of making photographs. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the hardest, no? You know, yeah. when you know how to do something, to not do it so well. <laughs> but also, you can't de-skill yourself uh, because it would be a pose no? to try and be... You know, you can't be... Obviously, you can't be spontaneous um, on demand and uh, but I was starting a thinking process like what would pictures look like um, 20 years rewound yeah. today um, and um, and then I started to travel and leave and, and, and change change parameters um, like non-familiar places, uh, no connection, uh, a new camera, um, different technology, um, um, and... Uh, Was it a bit like a midlife crisis? <laughs> <laughs> the question is allowed. <laughs> I never thought about that. It's not so bad question. I, maybe there's something in changing, exploring, you know. Like, mm. I turned 40 in 2008. Yeah, maybe that. Um, um, no, I think um, 
I mean, I guess the Hamburger Bahnhof show in 2008 yeah. was this, um, um, like that was a really defining moment for me. Right? It's inter like, I think it was very, um, um, I don't know, I feel um, it was a significant point and, uh, and, uh, and what I formulated there about the object, the photograph as object in space um, um, with a huge uh, True Study Center installation and, and the paper drops and everything came together about the manifestation of this sheet of paper yeah. in all its possible forms. Um, and I guess um, rather than sit on that and dwell on that, I, I felt uh, to go in, almost in the opposite direction whilst not abandoning that. No, yeah. I kept on working on these subjects as well. And how do you select an image that becomes an artwork? Is there a sort of editing process? Is a particular this one, not that one? How does that happen? Do you talk to Daniel? Um, I mean, at a later stage, because I, don't, I know that I can't uh, um, use Maureen or Daniel or Christopher um, for hours and hours <laughs> a month. <laughs> he can, yeah. and, and he does. <laughs> No, I don't. I may, you know, like it's a, uh, you know, like their attention span. Yeah, of course, you know, you can't like show every just unedited uh, selection of stuff. Yeah. So, um, I, of course, do a lot of um, work myself. But, but, um, but uh, studio visits uh, um, are really important to me yeah. because even the moment you show it, um, to a third person, you already see yourself and you know almost yourself in the moment. Uh. That's interesting that you said that because the, the third person idea, uh, when you present something first time, also only in the studio, um, that helps you somehow, right? Mm. Yeah. You kind of hear yourself talk. And, and then you know, yeah. is this actually um, genuine or do I want this to be good? Yeah. Because the big, big thing about editing is you have to edit out the want. Yeah. You know, the moment, because of course we want this, I want this to be good. But the wanting counts for nothing. But it's really hard to, uh, to get that. Not for nothing, but yeah. th no. th there, is, there is an interest, <laughs> but there is a direction you want to go, you know. Then mm. Um, it's so interesting because um, there's a lot of artists who would never do this. Also, yeah. Yeah? Uh, it's a very interesting practice in a way, yeah? which is very actually unique in the moment. Uh, or in the and do you ever have situations with Daniel, Maureen or Chris where you think this works, something's amazing, and then they turn up and say, what were you thinking? I think they have saved me on occasions. <laughs> <laughs> we had bad moments. <laughs> uh, yeah, of no, course. Yes, of course. No. It. Uh, um, I mean, I. And I know, you know, if they say they don't like it, um, and I, a day later, still think I want it, then of course I do it, and then they of course. And then we change our minds. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. The, to be that also clear. Yeah. Uh, but then we also said sometimes, you know, and then you said, mm, yeah, you're right. Yes. Right? So, no, I mean, it really. I mean, like, that was really, it was a dialogue. It was not only like a... I mean, I can really, like, somehow, sometimes it just opens my eye and I think, no, 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 no way. No. And then, but maybe the idea resurfaces some years later yeah. in another way. No. But it is, um, it is a very um, um, free um, conversation and, and maybe here at Art Basel, where it is about galleries, maybe it is important uh, to say, and I hope it doesn't sound cheesy, but it, uh, oh no, it's not cheesy, but, but it sounds like uh, um, too fawning, uh, but, but uh, people underestimate the importance of gallerists um, in artists' lives and practice. You know, the yeah. amount, um, I mean, I only know really, and I only work with galleries that um, they all have incredibly um, in-depth relationships to 
some of their artists, maybe sometimes not all because they work in different cities, or, um, but... Um, 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 we have, uh, for example, uh, on the booth, we have like Adam Bleach out from 1991, yeah. shown in 1993, first, was on our first show, and then a silver piece from uh, New. And we wanted to do that a little bit, like the, you know, the, one of the first photographs um, presented with a, with a very new one. <clears throat> and there was always um, an explete interest in expression and all that. It's, so it is interesting to see this together, you know, like as a... Um, um, why I brought it up? I forgot. Because I wanted to sing your praises. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> and maybe I wanted to praise yours, and now I'm talking about me? Oh my God. Well, people think that, they, that this is just a very much a commercial relationship, yeah. but it is very much about content, and nobody knows uh, the work better than, um, than the galleries. Yeah. Because you know that it's an ongoing; they are present as it happens, and um, um, and are you involved in making decisions about what goes on your gallery space? In my case, very much. I like to uh, just sort of experience. I don't like it when I go uh, and see a fair, and in in three booths I see very similar yeah. work by the same artist. So. Um, um, I like to make sure that every gallery has a different type of work, that yeah. there's no repetitions. And, uh, and I guess almost all galleries, certainly Daniel and Maureen, um, don't change their booths throughout the fair. Yeah. They see their booth as um, a reflection of what they want to show at this moment. And that is one thing that they want to show as a whole composition. Uh, and you don't, show, you don't change an exhibition halfway yeah. through. And, and so most of my galleries deal with this as an exhibition. And I think you take it super seriously. You know, what this uh, is like a portrait. I have of to stay the whole week, you know, like I have to <laughs> survive for myself. You know. So you want to be around something you like. Something nice. And if you don't sell, then you go home doesn't matter, you know. Like, no, thank you, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, it is true. It is true. It is important. And Wolfgang, you have um, you run an off space in Berlin now. Um, you've shown some artists that Daniel worked with, Isa Genskin. The only one. No? Yeah, yeah, but that one. Um, but that one. Did you did you learn how to do this from people like Daniel and Maureen, or is it reaction against what you're trying to show them how to do it properly? Ah, <laughs> no, 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 no. He's a beast. <laughs> um, no, it all started in 2006 in London when I um, reduced my uh, teaching position in Frankfurt at the Städelschule uh, to a half-time position and um, I felt that the time that I saved I wanted to use in a different way of uh, communication and uh, show in London um, work that I felt was underrepresented in London. Um, yeah. I felt at the time there was um, such a focus of, on just promoting your own work and doing your own thing amongst young artists and no, no real engagement with society. You know, at a time, I mean, we're talking 2005 uh, with Iraq war and, and, and a lot of stuff that you could be concerned about going on and, um, and I felt there was a complete disconnect in, with a lot of, uh, in, in, a, in a big part of um, uh, the art world um, and younger art world in London and, um, and uh, so I, um, the first show was um, David Wonorowicz yeah. um, who, you know, like I thought, like, was so brave to risk his entire career on like what, like how he talked. I mean, yeah. you know, who would talk like this today? You know, like um, actually, Daniel lent a sculpture. A yeah, but you have that fantastic piece, the boy, when it starts. The um, the the you have text. That yeah, yes. the text with the well, no, that is amazing. Yes, yes don't you think? That was so heartbreaking. Yeah. And um, 
and um, and so it was really a communication tool. It certainly wasn't made to make money. Um, it was um, just to show alternative voices that uh, were for some reason or other overlooked or they wouldn't get an ICA show yeah. or a certain time show um, because they're not well enough, uh, well known enough uh, or um, artists that um, died too young or that um, had no limited editions um, and therefore were excluded from the art market. Yeah. Um, so people working in different um, um, ways that in the end uh, made the work um, uh, somehow drop out of sight. And, uh, but at, on the other hand, it's not dogmatic. Uh, like I do show also friends occasionally, you know, <laughs> like, like there was a show in Berlin in March uh, that Karl Holmquist curated, yeah. um, um, or showing Isa. But then again, Isa is, of course, um, a highly political figure yeah. in her own way. You know? So you, with the space and with the teaching to some degree, are you trying to shape the way other artists are perceived to engage with society or will engage with society to kind of spread your doctrine? Um, um, it's not a doctrine, certainly. Um, um, but, I mean, I... Um, yeah, I don't think... I, I don't do this uh, in a detached... Uh, space. I mean, I do this to connect with other people. Um, I mean, we live together and the whole, uh, yeah, if we are alone, it, I mean, there's no point, I find, to, um, you know, you can't engineer connections. You cannot engineer it, but you can try to, to uh, make sense. And, um, and uh, it is an incredible... It is an, the art world is an incredible place uh, for ideas to be thought and uh, and um, I have no no mission but I think it's an amazing um, still an amazingly free space yeah um, and there are um, incredible things thought up and of course there are a lot of things happening that I don't find so interesting and it's about using your voice and trying to make increase the interesting stuff so you do have a mission <laughs> okay yeah. and you've talked a lot about other artists to what extent do other artists influence you in terms of what you do or talking with them discussing things with them finding similarities common ground is that important to you um, I mean, there. Um, hmm. Yes, there's. I mean, there's. Um, I guess a super important. Um, um, I mean, a very close relationship I have uh, I had with Jochen Klein, the painter, yeah. where, where, um, and um, with Anders Clausen. So, like two artists as partners, um, um, and of course, there it is a extremely in-depth um, exchange uh, and, and sort of traveling together, looking at art together. Um, I think looking at art together, I mean also us looking at art together is one of the most wonderful things right, to... Um, I think it's so important to do it with somebody else you understand, you know. And with Jochen, I'm sure it was uh, amazing. You, know, like, mm. you have to talk yeah, up. Yeah, I wonder, I think the, his microphone is not up. Mm. Or, um, Should you maybe get a handheld one? I can speak louder. Oh, that's better. <laughs> um, that's much better. Um, and um, and uh, um, yes, now the uh, dialogue with other artists is uh, super important. And uh, again, it cannot be increased at will. You know, you can't yeah. find like like you know uh, meaningful connections on demand. But uh, um, it was interesting. Um, um, they, they, yeah, you, you somehow like each other, or you, 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 there are connections. And some of these happened in the early days and last throughout uh, um, life, maybe. Yeah. And um, and um, 
and of course, the longer you, you know each other, it becomes almost like uh, school friends. That you yeah. kind of know what you were like, and yeah. so you can't bullshit each other. And you all used to sit on the back of the bus. <laughs> um, to one you, we're going to uh, throw it open to questions in a second from the audience. So if you can think about them and get ready with your hands, um, that'd be great. Um, so do you have a moment when you realized, I'm an artist? Ich bin ein Künstler. Um, I guess there's one photograph which I kind of call my picture number one, uh, um, which uh, is called La Canal Self from 1986 when I was 18. Um, and it's this photograph down my leg, down my T-shirt, yeah. and it's uh, and um, um, but then turned around 180 degrees, and it's it is the first abstract picture, the first figurative picture, the first self-portrait. Uh, but it was this act of saying I am and doing an unreasonable act. You know, it was it's not. There's no, it was not a reasonable yeah. act to do this. And, uh, and it was standing on a beach in France and on an interrail trip, on a, this self-affirmative moment, I am. Um, but that was not what I felt then. And, you know, I'm not doing this now deliberately. Yeah. I just did. Then years later, I recognized that. Um, but I was just very, very fortunate that I was not good at um, art in school. Really? That's, my, that's been a great advantage. You know, that I was not pointed out uh, as the talented one in my family. Yeah. You know, my interest was, was in science originally and then uh, very much in the social sciences, in, in, in the, you know, the yeah. peace movement and, and, and applying makeup. Um, yeah. um, um, Is this something you tell your students? Oh, if you are talented at drawing and you get spotted in school, then you can't change that. You know, so that's your condition. You have to yeah. deal with that. No? But um, I mean, Jochen was uh, spotted early on, and he was always, oh, he's going to be the artist. No? And in my case, um, um, I behaved like an artist. I was uh, doing things, uh, uh, but they were not recognized as art. You know, I was doing these photocopies when I was 18. Yeah. Um, of course, nobody thought this is art. I thought this is art, um, but uh, um, and I always had, luckily, I had an underlying self-confidence, but I wasn't sort of pushed in that direction, and that was really great. And 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 I was never the one with a camera uh, because my family were all amateur photographers, yeah. so photography was the last thing I picked up. Um, so there were a couple of good. Um, presets yeah. that allowed me to to um, um, grow to, 20, to the age of 20 before I actually um, um, was then um, forced almost to yeah. to acknowledge what I was. Yeah. Are there questions? If you raise your hands, there's one over there. There's a microphone. There's one over That's there. That's there. If you wait for the microphone to arrive. Oh, this one. Yeah, uh, what, what was it that was so inspiring about Berlin nightlife and counterculture for you as an artist, and what inspires you today? Um, it was actually London nightlife or European nightlife. Uh, it's funny, like I never really lived in Berlin until uh, three years ago, um, but um, I guess some of the pictures happened in Berlin and I'm connected to Berlin, but it was really London that, um, that inspired me most. And, uh, um, and um, I've been observing subculture in London from my little hometown in Germany for many years. And then at the end of the 80s, uh, when Acid House happened and ecstasy culture happened, it was the first time that I could be part of a youth movement. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and I guess uh, anybody who was around at the time um, um, knows that it felt really like this is going to change the world. You know? Like if only everybody took an E, um, you know, it would uh, um, just <laughs> change so much. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> of course, that didn't happen. Um, 
but um, um, I think um, I like, I mean, what, what I find so uh, fascinating and, and liberating about um, um, some aspects of nightlife uh, is, when, or is when it is free. Um, I mean, it can't be necessarily completely free of charge, um, but when it is free of uh, hierarchies, uh, when it is an, a utopian space yeah. where things can happen in, a, in unexpected ways, and uh, and um, and and I'm, I watch with great concern how nightlife today is uh, so much more controlled um, and commercial experience, um, starting with the smoking ban. Yeah. You know, a smoking ban means, of course, that no joints can be smoked. Um, yeah. That all toilets are completely supervised. That no sex can happen anywhere. Um, now we are talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like like there's this idea of uh, control, um, controlling public spaces, controlling free spaces. Yeah. Um, that's uh, um, something that I felt so passionate about in the beginning, um, and that's really um, what the essence, uh, an, es an essence of my work um, was about. And I uh, feel that that is uh, very much encroached upon and, um, and we are in a world that is becoming less and less free and I feel there's a great need to defend um, um, personal freedom yeah. in, in, in seemingly superficial ways yeah. like how we are told to behave um, you know like there's a lot of normative pressure today that we didn't imagine um, 20 ja. years ago possible. Künstliche Paradiese. Danke. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Next question. Is there one? No. Is there another question? So there's one. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Rose. And uh, yesterday I read in the art newspaper about your project at Manifesta. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Yes, of course, a question about this. Uh, was it a difficult decision for you to participate at Manifesta? Can you say something about that? Um, um, Manifesta takes place in St. Petersburg. That's why the question, if it was difficult to um, say yes, um, um, in the light of the homophobic um, politics in, in Russia. Um, I, um, I have two points of view on a boycott. Um, um, in one way, I fundamentally believe that boycotts do work because of South Africa. Like South Africans I spoke to all agree that it was the boycott that changed apartheid. Yeah. Um, but the other aspect is um, um, somebody said, um, a boycott means nothing if it doesn't cost you anything. You know, if, there's, if you just comfortably can boycott something because it makes you feel better and makes you look better in the public eye, then it's not much of an effort. Yeah. Um, and I feel this, there's a certain aspect of um, Russia, anti-Russian rhetoric that comes a little bit too easy and overlooks uh, it's almost like double standards, yeah. um, um, and so I feel um, I would. I have not opposed to a gallery taking a picture of mine to um, Abu Dhabi, and I have not opposed uh, been opposed to uh, stopped uh, my work to be in a group show in Shanghai, um, and. Um, you know, the, and, and I didn't boycott the United States uh, when they illegally invaded Iraq. Mm. I made work as part of the USA tour um, that dealt with, I guess, where I expressed some opinions. But I, um, so to now say I'm going to boycott this Russian show um, felt um, felt um, wrong, and um, and. Um, yeah. I believe you. I'm personally pissed with Russia, but I believe you. Yeah. But boycott is also wrong. It's a wrong word in this uh, 
whole th uh, thing because th nobody's boycotting, nobody's caring. I mean, not the, the government in Russia is this is damn shit about Van yeah? mm. uh, It's not about it's not the Olympics or something. You know, it's not like that. Yeah? But I believe you because that's what you're thinking and doing. But I'm not going. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> because I'm personal. Yeah. Yes, but you know. No, it is. Um, it is. Um, it is a difficult decision. But um, <clears throat> um, um, and if if it would collapse now, I mean, I, I'm sure it would have ramifications. Um, but um, um, I mean, of course, when you go there, you also see. You meet yeah. um, amazing people, um, and 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 it is important to under, to, to uh, I feel, and that's interesting since my move to Berlin, um, that I have a, more, a deeper interest in Eastern Europe, you know, because there's still an incredible mental block yeah. between Eastern and Western Europe, and and uh, I um, only 2011 had my first exhibition in Poland. Um, And I hadn't really been to Poland um, before 2010. And it's, it's yeah. kind of crazy, you know, that Berlin is 100 kilometers from Poland, and I've been to every other country in Europe. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm very much interested in, in dialogue with Eastern Europe. Is there probably got time for one more question? Is there anyone? There's one in the middle. Yes. Hi, my name is Robert. Um, you were talking earlier about your photographs being uh, not only about the photographic image, but very much about the object being present in the space, the photographic paper. Um, how do you stand on the trend that seems to me to be more or less a media made up thing, any, thing anyway, of uh, more and more art being shown online or sold online or um, online galleries being uh, growing? Um, well, in other words, do you think that uh, looking at art online can substitute the experience in space? Well, it obviously can't substitute the experience of space because there is no space on your desktop. Um, it is a two-dimensional thing. You just cannot um, experience it. And, um, um, and uh, it's interesting, like Daniel, And I, we were talking about um, showing pictures here, and uh, then we decided not. And then we decided not. And, and Daniel was saying, like, uh, no, but you know, when you show pictures, and people think that they've seen it, and they don't go. Um, and yeah. um, and also on on your website, you, your pictures are deliberately small, no? that they cannot purpose, be yeah. that they cannot be yeah. somehow seen that you imagine that you've seen it. Yeah. Um, I have a, a different approach uh, a little bit because I have this, uh, I had this uh, striking experience in um, Skopje in Macedonia in 2005 uh, when I um, had a show there at the occasion of the first uh, gay and lesbian week um, and the people who were there like uh, 90 or 100 at the opening, a lot of them knew my work and not a single person had seen um, an exhibition or a book even. And this was a complete eye-opener and so I felt uh, since then it's not a question if it's cool or uncool to have a website, uh, but it's actually a necessity for so many people to, um, um, you know, they cannot see the work um, and so a decent picture quality yeah. is uh, is good but of course it is terrible people think now they have experienced something um, um, somebody but um, I mean I think certainly um, electronic the, the medium is a relevant art medium because everything can potentially be a relevant art medium and when you have millions of people look at something and deal with something, um, you know, how can this not be a venue for art? Um, so I'm totally open to that, but I'm not sure that um, I have ventured there and that I will venture there, but I have, uh, um, I have just 
last week um, um, in, made a work, uh, installed, shown for the first time a work that is immaterial photographs uh, at the Venice uh, Architecture Biennale. Um, and that is actually dealing with uh, the idea of um, immaterial photographs projected at a quality that is satisfactory to my um, image standards. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm thinking about what might come after the print, but that is not for me on the surface of a handheld device. Yeah. I think on that note, um, people are probably waiting to rush back to the offline art. Um, <laughs> but thank you all for coming, and really thank you Wolfgang and Daniel for a really fun time. <laughs>